These works of art exist in the digital world, and now they're worth millions of dollars. It's part of an explosion in the market for NFTs, digital tokens that prove ownership of things like digital art that you can't even touch. The center of this virtual gold rush is Mike Winkleman, better known as Beeple. Like I never thought I could sell my work like this. Then he heard about NFTs. Kind of late September, um, early October, people kept hitting me up being like, oh, you gotta look at this NFT thing. Two months later, he netted $3.5 million selling art backed by NFTs. Definitely just like mind boggling. In March, Christie's, a 225-year-old auction house that previously only sold physical art. Previously in the collections of three kings of England. At 90 million. Auctioned an entirely digital Beeple for millions of dollars. Is it a bubble? I think there is a very good chance. There could be a bubble. So why are NFTs and digital art getting so expensive so quickly? The speculation in this market is so wild that when a $95,000 Banksy was burned and then resold, it raised a staggering $400,000 as an NFT. We sort of value things. It's like if everybody wants it, well, then it has value. I mean, what makes a Louis Vuitton purse have value? It's, it's just brown like leather purse. To understand who pays, it's important to understand NFTs. So it's sort of like saying, do you think a web page is valuable? Well, I don't know. It could be. NFT stands for non-fungible token, essentially a digital signature backed by blockchain technology that proves ownership of something. Unlike Bitcoin, which are all identical by design, NFTs are unique. To some degree, what NFTs offer for sale is the idea of scarcity. It's possible to buy a token that represents art in the physical world, but NFTs also back digital assets like an image or even a tweet. The current bid on Jack Dorsey's first tweet is $2.5 million. This cat meme recently sold for $600,000. Last week, Logan Paul made over $5,081,490 selling digital trading cards of himself known as NFTs. For Beeple, his daily dedication to his craft helped drive his popularity as he posted art he created from his home in Charleston, South Carolina. So May 1st, 2007, I started doing a sketch a day, um, every single day, start to finish. And year after year, people gave them away and built an audience online. Sharing my stuff and sort of putting it out there, I think, actually makes the stuff more valuable because it makes it more popular. His rise to broader fame as an artist happened seemingly overnight. Back in the olden days of 2020, Beeple's NFT-backed Crossroads sold for $66,666. I was like, oh my God, I sold a piece for 66,000, it was just like insane. In December, Beeple sold $3.5 million worth of art in one day. On February 26th, Crossroads resold on the secondary NFT market for $6.6 .6 million, of which Beeple got 10%. And so now, fast forward four months, and it's like 6.6 .6 million. It's just like, <laughs> yeah, I don't, it's very, it's a lot. It's a thing, I don't know. Then in March, Christie's sells the 5,000 image montage by Beeple for nearly $70 million. That makes Beeple the third most expensive living artist in the world. It's like, okay, now the next thing happening, now the next thing happening, the next thing happening. And it's just like, you know, now today's show calling, okay. His work can also cross into topics that can be offensive or provocative. So is Beeple trolling us with his art and with this idea of selling something you can get for free off his Instagram? So I'm like, okay, well that's, you know, not a totally invalid argument. What can I do to sort of like nullify that argument? Back in December, Beeple provided a physical product along with the NFT for his digital art. This you can't get on Instagram. This is like, you know, a physical thing that you can, if you're buying the NFT, you get this. So it really kind of instantly sort of like changes it. And it's like, you don't even really need to understand the NFT part, like you're buying this. But for Christie's, being all digital is what made Beeple's artwork all the more unique and valuable. It's really a radical gesture um, to offer for sale something without any objecthood. And we might as well lean into that. Beeple's day job is as a graphic designer with clients like Louis Vuitton, Nike, and Apple. So I don't really like the term artist because it sounds very pretentious and douchey. Like I would never be like, I'm an artist. Still, he's regularly compared to Banksy and Warhol, artists who undermine the notion of owning art. 
and also to that Italian artist who mocked the fine art market by taping a banana to the wall. This banana duct taped to a wall. It's Maurizio Catalan's latest work of art. It's called The Comedian. I think if you looked at a lot of fine art, you would probably say the same thing, or most people would say the same thing. They'd be like, who paid for this? This is Ryoma Ito, co-founder of Maker's Place, an online marketplace that sells NFTs. He teamed up with Christie's for the sale of Beeple's collage. The big catalyst was the Christie's auction. Um, that announcement brought in a lot of visibility in so many different channels. To build anticipation for the Christie's auction, Ryoma teamed up with Beeple to sell some of his artworks for a dollar each. It crashed the Maker's Place site. At our peak, we had about uh, 450,000 trans- uh, 450,000 requests coming through at a second, so. Day trader Keith Llewellyn was one of the lucky ones, buying the NFT for just $1. So, I learned about NFTs last week just before I posted this video on my TikTok. Then I followed the world's biggest NFT artist and noticed he was having an NFT drop where his work was going for only a dollar. Key ended up with one of Beeple's artworks and was offered $50,000 for it the same day, but didn't take the offer. I expect it to expand like exponentially by the end of this year. Instead of art collectors, many of the buyers at the moment are like key, speculators and investors in this gold rush. Just like with cryptocurrencies, environmental and climate concerns are real. NFT transactions use significant, growing amounts of electricity. In a single month, one NFT marketplace went from 200 transactions a day to 5,000. And I honestly think that the sort of digital art community is going to take this much more seriously addressing these issues than sort of the broader blockchain community. The question is if this mania will keep going or come crashing down.